ಶುಕ್ಲಾಂ ಬರದರಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಶಶಿವರ್ಣ ಚತುರ್ಭುಜ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನವದನ ಧ್ಯಾತ್ ಸರ್ವಿಘ್ನೋಪಶಾಂತ ವ್ಯಾಸಯ ವಿಷ್ಣು ವ್ಯಾಸೂಪಾಯ ವಿಷ್ಣವೇ ನಮೋ ವೈ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿಧೇ ವಾಸಿಷ್ಠಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಯಸ್ ಸ್ಮರಣ ಮಾತ್ರೇಣ ಜನ್ಮ ಸಂಸಾರ ಬಂಧನಾತ್ ವಿಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ನಮಸ್ತಸ್ಮೈ ವಿಷ್ಣವೇ ಪ್ರಭು ವಿಷ್ಣವೇ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶಾಯ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಸೆವರಿಬಡಿ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ they say that there are about 7.8 billion people about 780 crores of people all these people are divided on different factors on gender on language on nation food habits education wealth so many things but one thing which unites all of them together is their pursuit of happiness all the 7.8 people 8 billion people in this world are all looking for or at least looking i mean uh, trying their best to be happy that is what they are looking for the only difference among all of us is that uh, uh, they have they look for different means to um, get uh, get happiness that's all that that's that's the difference between among all this uh, 7.8 billion people some of them may think that by getting a good degree they will be happy some of them may think that by getting a good job they will be happy some of them may think that you know by getting a good children they will be happy so so many other conditions they put on themselves to become happy some of them may even think that ultimately getting into the abode of bhagwan will give them happiness so all these different uh, means have been classified in our sanatana dharma into four categories they are called as dharma artha kama moksha they are also called as purushartha purushartha purusha means all these uh, human beings of the jivatmas artha means that is their goal in the life there there can be classified into these four categories so in terms of evolution we can start from artha artha means the wealth so initially people feel insecure and therefore they feel that by you know maybe the physically insecure so they want to get a good house so then they look for <coughs> so therefore they look for a good job then uh, uh, i mean get good money and therefore that will make them physically secure or something like that so they look for money artha then once their physical all the security needs are completely fulfilled then they start thinking about the enjoyment kama is the desires enjoyment so people say that when there is a sufficient balances they have got good houses and everything then they start thinking of let's let me buy a good bmw car or benz car or let me go on world tour and all those things so those kind of enjoyments so once they go for enjoyments artha kama then comes dharma so they feel that okay still they feel some lurking you know uh, uh, what do you call uh, lack of satisfaction in their mind so they feel that i have got all these things still there is something which is not making me fully happy i am not fully satisfied so then they start looking into the various kinds of dharma then they start that the purpose is to you know give it in charity then they look for the various scriptures getting into such things trying to know what our dharmas what our you know righteousness means and all those things so they move into the path of dharma then ultimately when they finally go there then they understand what is the purpose of this uh, entire life the purpose of this life uh, the the human birth is to attain moksha so that is the greatness bhagwan has created this human birth because he has given this uh, discriminative intelligence for us to you know to identify what is good and bad and finally seek what is the best thing in this permanent happiness we all look for happiness but then all we get temporary happiness we get happiness for some time and then ultimately disappears so that's the reason why people finally look for the permanent happiness the moksha so that is how the 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 sanatana dharma is classified into four purusharthas now the source of our sanatana dharma or the basis of our sanatana dharma is vedas that's why our, our you know the religion is called the not only sanatana dharma it is also called as vedika it's also called as the vedika dharma that means uh, vedas are the basis of our religions what is contained in the vedas is accepted and what is not found in the vedas is uh, not considered in our religion so that's why it is called as vaidika mata now vedas are the basis i said the vedas means what vid it comes from the root word vid means to know that means knowledge so vedas are the source of knowledge so if we, if we classify the vedas it can broadly be classified into two categories one is called the karma kanda the other is called as the jnana kanda so karma kanda are the uh, the various uh, uh, actions or the various yaga yagnas to be performed for getting this you know the various kind of uh, material things that we want in this life for example you find in the ramayana the king dasaratha performed this uh, putra kamashti yaga because he didn't have any children so 
like that those those is these are all the karma kandas if you want to if you perform jyotish toma you will go to heaven so those are all the kind of karma kanda then the later part which is called as the vedanta is called as jnana kanda jnana kanda is okay having performed these various karmas what is the whole purpose or the goal of life the goal of life is ultimately reach the abode of bhagwan so that is the moksha that is also called as moksha and therefore moksha is the ultimate path and therefore what are the means and then what is the 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 what is what is the nature of paramatma what is the nature of jivatma what are the ways of reaching bhagwan so those are all contained in the jnana kanda which is also part of the upanishads so this is what the vedas are now this vedas are theoretical knowledge i mean there are certain injunctions not all people can know vedas or understand the meaning of the vedas and therefore the rishis and the various gnanis in their wisdom thought that this knowledge must go to all the all all and sundry all the people in this universe and that is the reason why they they uh, uh, <clears throat> they what do you call this this all these puranas and itihasas came into being so the rishis composed the various puranas and itihasas for the sake of a common man expounding on the principles of vedas normally vedas are very brief and also uh, very direct and also in term uh, i mean not direct it is indirect and also it is also the theoretical in all, theory in knowledge so how to how to follow this in practice is what is contained in the puranas and itihasas for example in the taitri upanishad we find that satyan pramati davyam dharman pramati davyam kushalan pramati davyam deva pitrkar ya bhyam na pramati davyam so that's what it says the first thing is satyan pramati davyam that means don't leave away from the path of satya that's what the upanishad says now how to follow that that's what is contained by the various puranas for example the harichandra purana the harichandra purana talks about how under different uh, trials and tribulations and then various testing times how harichandra stood to the path of the satya speaking the truth even when vishwamitra enticed him by saying that you if you if you come out of the path of truth you will get these things these things but then still he was uh, and even under those testing times harichandra followed the path of satya so that is the example or how to follow the path that is being contained the practical way of the, what is contained in the vedas is what we call we, what we have is in the puranas and itihasas so in the uh, among the puranas and itihasas itihasas are uh, the ramayana and mahabharata they are called itihasa because they have more credibility in terms of they have been composed by the the uh, valmiki uh, on ramayana and then vedavyasa and mahabharata because they were contemporaries of those periods because ram uh, valmiki wrote ramayana when ramayana was uh, very much present on the scene he taught it to lava and kusha and then lava and kusha recites in front of ramachandra murthy and ramachandra murthy endorses the various incidents that happened in the ramayana so that is the credibility to the itihasas similarly mahabharata was composed by vedavyasa who was all was also part of uh, the the entire episodes in the mahabharata and therefore that has got more credibility in terms compared to the other puranas because the other puranas are comp- of course composed by the, uh, the rishis uh, using the jnana drishtis but then these these two have much greater credibility compared to the other puranas now when you come to uh, of the two puranas mahabharata is said to be panchamo veda that means it is the fifth vedas that means what is contained in the vedas is contained in the in the mahabharata and what you don't find in mahabharata you can't find in any other scriptures that is the comprehensiveness of the mahabharata mahatvatvat bharatvat mahabharate iti uchyate that means it is great mahat means great bharatvat means heavy the subjects taught are very heavy in this mahabharata and therefore it is called as mahabharata and mahabharata itself has got is a huge one it has got about 125000 shlokas and therefore to you know, even to study mahabharata to a parayana of mahabharata will take several weeks or months so we in the, in the modern time we don't have time to do even the parayana of mahabharata and so what do we do so you look for the essence of mahabharata when you look for the essence of mahabharata two things stand out very prominently important one is the bhagavad gita which was given by bhagwan sri krishna to arjuna when he was in the battlefield kurukshetra war when he was confounded as to what is real dharma was and bhagwan ultimately gave him this dharma and therefore clarified his doubt that is mahabharata second of course is the vishnu sahasranama so the vishnu sahasranama <coughs> is uh, uh is uh, uh, was recited or told by bhishma pitamha to yudhishthira after the war was over uh, bhishma pitamha was still lying on the bed of arrows because he had he had a boon called swachanda mrutyu from his father he can die at his will so he was waiting for the onset of the uttarayana so in the meantime yudhishthira was anointed as the king but then still yudhishthira was uh, arjuna was confused before the war uh, yudhishthira was confused after the war he was wondering whether he should have fought the battle whether he should have Uh, defeat i mean kill this kitan kin and got this kingdom 
So at that time, one day, Krishna Paramatma came to, uh, I mean, uh, came uh, came to Yudhishthira and said, uh, "Bhishma Pita Maha is lying on the bed of arrows. He is going to leave this uh, universe in another couple of uh, weeks or so. So since you are appointed as the king, you should know all this dharma, and therefore let's all go and meet Bhishma Pita Mar and know from him what is dharma as such. And therefore he takes uh, the Pancha Pandavas to Bhishma Pita Mar, and then." That's the that is the setting of this Vishnu Sahasranama. We'll talk about the subsequent portion tomorrow. Om Namo Venkateshaya.